They are in Saturday, Buffalo and New York at the Key Bank Center, the main event. Light heavyweight rematch, Daniel Cormier, our buddy, and Anthony Rumble Johnson. And Dana's joining us. This is your second UFC fight in New York State. When Now, you've done a lot in L.A. and a lot in, in, in Nevada. Dana, is, is you're transitioning into New York. What has that been like behind the scenes? This is our fourth. This is actually our, our fourth, fourth fight in New York. Yeah, and uh, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's, it's been uh, a long time coming, and, and, and it's actually been really good. Uh, Buffalo, Buffalo's going to sell out this weekend, too. And, uh, yeah, New York's been good to us so far. It's interesting that Cormier uh, replaced your champion, John Jones. And, you know, John was electric and dynamic, and Cormier's never been embraced by fans, despite the fact he's outstanding. Does that, I mean, Muhammad Ali wasn't just because he was great, Dana. He had style. Do you worry sometimes that, how big, I guess, is style to your fighters? Because clearly Cormier's a monster, but he wrestles, he pins, the crowd sometimes hisses. You know, is part of McGregor just dudes interesting? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's the weirdest thing ever um, that that he has not been embraced by the fans. He's a great guy. He's very well spoken, and his fights are exciting. You know, you, you know, Cormier is an exciting fighter. Um, you know, it's it's a weird thing. They like the bad boy John Jones. Last time we had a press conference with those two, they were cheering John Jones and booing Cormier. It's it's fascinating. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't get it. But. Yeah. What, what, it is what it is. Yeah. I always ask you about McGregor because he is so transformative. I mean, he, he every day another story came out about Mayweather today, and it makes Mayweather look bad. And, and I find McGregor to be incredibly likable, win or lose against Nate Diaz. I find him fascinating. And Mayweather had another story today where his daughter lost some competition, and it was really an ugly moment. I wonder now if you, if, if you are still – like, is Mayweather necessarily important or good for your business? His brand now, Dana, is getting so bad and so negative. I wonder if Mayweather's even worth the headache for for UFC. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's a fight that people do want to see. You know, it's intriguing, and obviously, it, it's it's a fight that Connor wants because financially, it's it's going to be massive for him. And McGregor is a guy, you know. He's a fighter that I have a lot of respect for. This guy has stepped up in, in times that people that were at his level would never step up. And I've said this a million times, and I'll say it again. I'm the guy standing in the living room. I'm the guy on the phone, you know, when, when, when uh, you know, these guys are looking down the barrel of, of a new opponent a week before the fight, and Conor McGregor doesn't flinch. This kid steps up. He'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. You know, a lot of people say it. Very few really mean it. Conor McGregor is, is I, I call him the unicorn, man. I've never dealt with a kid like this. So for him to have this opportunity to make this kind of money and, uh, you know, th 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 this type of a fight that, that people are so interested in worldwide – I almost feel like I have to make it. You know, despite the NFL's popularity, um, when the quarterback play, Favre retires, Peyton Manning retires, it hurts the league. You are going to be as viable, Dana, as the fighters you produce. The more right. the, the more talent, uh, the you know better look. I mean, Oscar De La Hoya, men and women wanted to watch him fight. There was a real yep. appeal. How do you ensure through academies, training, I mean – how do you ensure that you have six more McGregors in the next seven years? I, I'll, I'll probably never have another McGregor. You know, everybody's different in their own way. Everybody's unique. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to have six more unicorns. I can promise you that. But I will have other stars. You know, people have been saying to me since, you know, oh, my God, what are you going to do when Chuck Liddell's gone? Oh, my God, what are you going to do when Matt Hughes gone? Uh-oh, what, what's going to happen to the UFC when GSP goes away? The list goes on and on. I've been hearing that stuff for years. That's what I do. That's that's my job is to go out and find new talent and build it. And uh, you know, where, where do you find it? Everywhere. Well, it's it's getting easier easier now than it ever was. Nobody knew Conor McGregor four years ago. Four years ago, people didn't even know who Conor McGregor was. Now that the sport is getting bigger and it's so global. Men, women, and children, you know, kids from a young age are training in mixed martial arts. Kids that would have played soccer or basketball or football or baseball are training in mixed martial arts. 
um, all over the world. You know, I am going to continue to find, you know, the best fighters in the world, male and female. It, it's what I do. Main event this Saturday in Buffalo at the Key Bank Center, light heavyweight rematch. Our buddy Daniel DC Cormier and Anthony Rumble Johnson. Um, it's funny. I'm, I said this about two months ago. I said, I don't think it would be the worst idea. Is as Dana White grows this, that if you're going to have six people on a card, I mean, you were the person that pushed for women boxing, and you told me initially you didn't know how people would respond to it. You weren't even comfortable initially, and then you're like, oh, my God, it's a real business. Yeah. Is it a terrible idea that if you had a six-fight card, one of those fights, maybe the first one of the night, was a former NFL guy that taking athletes in other sports almost as exhibitions, J.J. Watt retires, you get him in a fight, that that you took a gamble on the female division and, hell, there were nights it was bigger than the male division. Mm-hmm. That that maybe a business opportunity for you, you know, to, to get recently retired NFL guys who have a background in wrestling or boxing. Is that a terrible idea? Yeah, no, it's not a terrible idea, but but it's much better if you get people who have been training. So believe me, we've done the NFL. We've had a couple of NFL guys, guys who played in the NFL, fighting the UFC. You know, and it, it, you know, <laughs> listen, they did okay. They, you know, they're not going to be world champions or huge stars or anything. They did okay. Uh, I think that when you find people who have been training in mixed martial arts their whole life, those are the ones that are going to be great. Those are the ones that are going to be the big stars. Um, you know, I, I just don't see anybody coming in, uh, you know, from the NFL and being incredibly. Imagine if you had a guy like Gronk, who's been training since he was a kid. Even in basketball, if you had a guy like LeBron, who, who trained in mixed martial arts since he was a, a kid. You know, these, these incredible athletes w- would definitely do well in the UFC. Yeah. But just bringing an NFL guy over, yeah. Yeah, I think you. Uh, what you always find out about UFC, it's way harder than people think. Absolutely. I mean, every guy that's ever been in a bar fight, <laughs> he thinks he can go in these octagons. And it's like when you go to one of your events, like in Buffalo, the quality of the fighting, that's one thing, Dana, that's so obvious to me. The quality, not only of your events, but the individual, you know, we think skill level, we think soccer, baseball. The skill level of your fighters today and 12 years ago, it's incredible how much greater it is. The, Thank I mean, you. It, it's incredible. I remember being in a bar in San Francisco 17 years ago and seeing fights and thinking, boy, that's rough. Your guys now are, like, was there a moment for you when you, were, you, you left a card and thought, God, this is real. These are skilled, world-class athletes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And obviously the men have been at that level for a long time. What's really blown me away lately are the women. Like I said, the, I didn't see the, the women thing coming, and, and these women are so tough, so technical, so talented, and, and it just keeps getting better and better. It's funny because on this card, actually, in Buffalo this weekend, there's a girl, she's from Team Alpha Male, and her name is uh, Cynthia Calvillo, right? And she fought on the, car, on the uh, Wonder Boy Thompson Woodley card. I was so blown away and so impressed by her that I'm actually bringing her back already in Buffalo, taking on a girl named Pearl Gonzalez. Um, and I'm actually really excited for that fight. You know, we got Chris Weidman versus Gegard Mousasi. We got uh, Cormier versus Anthony Johnson. Um, Miles Jury's coming back. He's in the main event on Fox Sports 1. And I'm more excited about the girls' fight. Yeah, uh, Dana White, the president of UFC in Buffalo. Well, you're from that area anyway. You like that snow stuff, right? What is it? Nah, I don't like the snow stuff. No, like I don't. 31 degrees there today? or what? Are no, you... I'm good with that. No, <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> good talking to you, Dana.